In this video, you will learn how to name inorganic compounds. Let's start first with the binary compounds. A binary compound is something consisting of precisely two elements. In naming binary ionic compounds, a metal will always be the first element to be named, followed by the first syllable from the name of the non-metal, plus the suffix IDE. Okay, so please take note of this because this will be very useful as we go to the different examples. Let's have example number one. How will you name this compound, KF? Now, based from our rule in naming binary ionic compound, you start first with the name of the metal. <coughs> Remember that the metal is always written first in a chemical formula. K is the symbol for potassium. So you write first the name of potassium. And then you get the first syllable of the element F. Element F is called fluorine. So getting the first syllable, that would be fluor. Plus ending with IDE. IDE. So the name of this compound is potassium fluoride. Now remember, Subscripts in the formula do not affect the name. Let's try another example. Let's try Na3N. Now, Na is the symbol for the element sodium. And N is the element nitrogen. Let's just get the first syllable. With the R and then ending with IDE. The name of this binary ionic compound is sodium nitride. Let's have another example. Let's have CA3P2. The first symbol is CA, which stands for the element calcium. Well, the second one is phosphorus. Let's get the first syllable, phos, with a P, and then plus the suffix IDE. So the name of this compound is calcium phosphide. Now this time, let's try to name ion ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are ions which consist of more than one atom. Here is how we name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. Name first the cation followed by the name of the polyatomic ion. Very simple. Now let me write it here in our whiteboard. Name of the cation first or the metal plus the name of the polyatomic ions. Let's try one example. How will you name ALPO4? Now, based on our rule, you name first the cation followed by the name of the polyatomic ion. The cation here is AL. AL is aluminum. While PO4 is phosphate. So the name of the compound is aluminum phosphate. Let's try another example. How will you name CaPO42? Just like how you name binary ionic compounds, you disregard the subscript. We will start first by naming the cation. In this case, the cation is calcium. Calcium to be followed by the polyatomic ion, which is PO4, named as phosphate. So the name of this compound is calcium phosphate. Let's try the last one. How will you name NaNO2? 
course, you will start with the cation, Na. Na stands for sodium. And NO2 stands for nitrite. So the name of the compound is sodium nitrite. In this video, you will learn how to name compounds using the stock system. The stock system is a little different with how we name binary compounds. The only difference is that it uses Roman numerals to indicate the charge used by the cation or metal during bonding. Let's have some examples. Let's start first with copper and chlorine, C-U-C-L. So I'd like you to take note of your background knowledge in writing chemical formulas. You know very well that chlorine has a negative one charge while copper could have positive one or positive two. In this case, let's try to look at positive one first. When you crisscross the two charges, it would simply result to CuCl. But let's not forget that Cu used number one for its charge. So let's proceed now with the name for CuCl using the stock system. Now, if you will be following the stock system in naming the CuCl, it's pretty much the same with naming binary compounds. The only difference is that you will be using the Roman numerals to indicate the charge used during um, chemical bonding. So in our case, let's start first by naming the cation, which is Cu. Cu is... Okay, so you is copper, and the charge used is 1, and so you are going to put there the Roman, the open and close parentheses, plus 1, followed by the root name of chlorine with ending IDE. So that would be copper 1 chloride. Let's try another example. CuCl2. <clears throat> From the name itself, you will know that copper used the positive 2 charge in this uh, type of compound. And so you will name first the metal, so that is copper. The charge used is 2. And then the root name of chlorine is chlor plus IDE. So the name of the compound is copper 2 chloride. Let's try another example. Let's have the element FES. FE is obviously iron. The charge for sulfur and iron here would be like this. FE used positive 2 while sulfur is positive 2. When you crisscross the 2, it results to FE 2 s2 since they are the same two you just have to remove giving you the final chemical formula of fes do not forget that iron used two for its charge and so let's proceed now by naming this compound fes so the name would be iron two sulfate sulfide with the ending IDE. Let's have the second one. We have Fe2S3. So you can see that Fe used the charge positive 3 while sulfur is positive 2. When you crisscross the 2, it resulted to Fe2S3, thus the compound. So do not forget that the Fe here use the charge positive 3. And so when you name it, you name first the cation. So that would be iron. Then the charge used is 3. And then the root name for sulfur is sulf plus the ending IDE. So the name would be iron 3 sulfide. In this video, you will name acids. For simple binary acids, these are usually acids wherein one ion is attached to hydrogen. Names for such acids consist of the prefix hydro, the first syllable or root name of the anion, and the suffix ic, plus the word acid. Let's try some examples.
Remember, in naming acid, you shall start first with the prefix hydro. So let's write hydro. And then it will be followed by the first syllable or root name of the anion, which is the Cl. So this, we will get the chlor. Plus the ending of IC. Do not forget the word acid. So the name for this acid is hydrochloric acid. Let's try another one. Let's have H. BR. Let's start first with the prefix hydro plus the root name for bromine which is brom plus the suffix IC and the word acid. So the name of this acid is hydrobromic acid. Let's have another one HF. Of course, we shall start by writing the word hydro plus the root word of fluorine, which is fluor, plus the suffix IC, and do not forget the word acid. So the name of this is hydrofluoric acid. And the last one is HI. We shall start first with the prefix hydro followed by the base or root name of iodine, which is uh, iod, and then the suffix IC plus the word acid. So the name now would be hydroiodic acid. Most strong bases contain hydroxide, a polyatomic ion. Therefore, strong bases are named following the rules for naming ionic compounds. Let's have these examples. Let's have NaOH. Since we will just be following the rules in naming ionic compounds, we shall start by naming the, uh, the cation or the metal. Na stands for sodium. And then you name the polyatomic ion hydroxide. So the name of this base is sodium hydroxide. Let's have another example. K O H. Let's start by naming the cation or the metal, which is K. K is potassium. Followed by the O H, which is hydroxide. So the name of this compound or base is potassium hydroxide. And the last example is CaOH2. Start by naming the metal or cation. In this case, we have Ca. The name for Ca is calcium. Plus the polyatomic ion hydroxide. So the name of this base is calcium hydroxide. 